Welcome back. Housing in Focus today with May existing home sales due out 10 a.m. Eastern this morning. My next guest expects the rental market to see a huge adjustment as people revert back to home ownership. Healy relocation owner Rogers Healy joins us right now. Good to see you, Healy. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, what, what are you expecting in terms of housing? Can you characterize where we are relative to the last seven years? Yeah, sure. So my, my thought on the rental market is they've, in, they've, in, can you, they've intended to increase the rent rates in like places like Dallas, Miami, Chicago, uh, even Nashville. We're well over two dollars a foot. So I think people are going to finally start to start saving a little, save a little bit of money, move away from the urban areas, and start buying some houses. Hopefully. Um, in the outer course. Does does the Fed moving on interest rates and obviously it doesn't look like anything's happening this year but how would a higher interest rate impact things do you expect that in the coming uh, year or so? Yeah I mean I think it's all relative and I think these people that were hopefully anticipating purchasing in the area they've been renting are probably going to be moving a little bit further out but right now money's money's fairly cheap and I think it's going to continue to be cheap for you know the immediate future so I don't think it's going to have that big of an impact on the home purchasing arena. Hey, Rogers, it's Kevin. My question to you on hey, this whole uh, rental market, I see more capacity coming online in the rental market. You're starting to see it, whether it's from the large REITs or even the right. REITs that focus on single-family homes that then rent them out. Is capacity going to actually come online and be an overhang for the housing market? Uh, you know, well, the good news is the capacity back, you know, a few years back, uh, probably six or seven years ago, it was all, these are all condos to be built to be sold as spec. So now it's at least rentals, so I don't think we're going to have um, as big of a problem. But, yeah, it's, you sometimes wonder where these people are coming from. And a lot of people are moving out of the coastal cities to places like Dallas. And, and so we, we see a constant influx, but I'm not too concerned. But, yeah, I mean, if you look at places like Atlanta, I think there's 44 high-rise rentals being built within a four-mile radius, and that's a little bit scary. Um, but, you know, because of that, the, the other parts of the real estate market are going to be protected. But you have, um, it's Dagan McDowell, you have a number of these Hi. real estate markets where prices are, are back at the, at the levels that they hit before the financial collapse, where you have record, right. records. So but talk about the, the rent-to-own equation, because it seems like that people are getting squeezed from both sides. I mean, something's got to give in a place like even Miami. You're saying, do you think the rent-to-own market is going to make just, it, I, any it, kind I, of... It's expensive to rent and it's expensive to own, so what happens? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, you know, the number one rule of real estate is location. I think that's going to start to shift. I think that the number one rule is going to eventually become affordability. And when people look at the numbers and they're spending a place like Miami, if you're, you know, subsector to something like a South Beach, the rents could, each, could easily increase to 450 a foot, and that's borderline ludicrous. So... You know, I, I think we'll see some interesting situations pop up. I haven't seen a ton of rent-to-own, especially in the luxury price point market. But like I said, I mean, money is still cheap, mm -hmm. and the amount of money people are spending on rent, they could probably rent for a year someone, somewhere more affordable, save some money, and make that a down payment on a potential purchase. Here's Kimberly from the Journal. Hi. Uh, so my Hi, question Kimberly. is, when, when you look out there, we, we've got a presidential election going on. You hear a lot of people talking about uh, the lack of optimism that people feel about the economy. When, when you go out, do you think the mood is out there for greater home ownership, more people buying in? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's still the American dream. I don't think anybody's going to wait or not want to buy a home because of an election or no matter who's elected. It's, it's still going to be something people are always focused on. But... You know, there's a little sense of fear around it, but I think it's more on the higher price point homes because, you know, people are worried about how they're, you know, what's going to happen to their to their savings if, if one or the other, you know, does make it in office. But I don't think it's going to have that big of an impact on the, the you know, well, the general maybe not, but, family. Maybe not, but isn't the broader impact just the economy that is sort of stuck in neutral and it's that much harder today to get a mortgage than it has been in a, in a decade? Yeah, but I think that's people protecting what happened back when, you know, the, the big short days happened. And I think it's good that the qualifications are a little bit more stringent, but, you know, people are still going to want to, they're, they're going to have to have a place to live somewhere. And, you know, if they have anything saved up, if they have 3.5% saved up, they're going to be able to purchase a home, probably just not in the area that they were preferring back when they started thinking about it. All right. We'll leave it there. Rogers, good to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Rogers, Thanks for having me. there. Next